A rich man refused to let her board first class, but regretted it when he heard her reply. Daniel Thompson was not just a businessman. He was a monument to punctuality. Clocks could be set by his routines, and it was a point of personal pride. But on this particular day in New York, the universe seemed to have conspired against him. New York mornings are usually predictable, but as Daniel stepped out of his Manhattan apartment, dressed in his crispest suit, the sky unexpectedly broke into a torrential downpour. The rain, sudden and unrelenting, drenched him in seconds. His usually impeccable suit clung to him, soaked, and the papers he had in his hand became a sodden mess. The day of his most critical business meeting, and he looked like he'd just walked out of a pool, fully clothed. Things went from bad to worse. The rain had caused an uproar in the traffic. Horns blared, tires screeched, and drivers shouted. The streets were jammed, and the taxi he hailed moved at a snail's pace. Every red light seemed longer than the last, every pedestrian crossing more crowded. Glancing at his watch, he felt the minutes slipping through his fingers like sand. The crucial flight to Miami was not just another trip. It was potentially the lifeline his business needed. His luxury home goods company had hit a rough patch, and a significant deal awaited him in Miami, a deal that could pull his company back from the brink. But every delay chipped away at the time he had to get to the airport and board his flight. Once he finally reached JFK Airport, relief washed over him. He still had some time, provided check-in and security went smoothly. But as he approached the kiosk, a sinking feeling took over. He couldn't find his boarding pass. Frantically, he called his assistant, who sheepishly admitted for forgetting to check him in. The weight of the oversight hit Daniel like a ton of bricks. On top of everything, now this? Waiting in the check-in line, anxiety heightened with every tick of the clock. He was stuck behind an elderly lady, Mrs. Miller, who, unfamiliar with the process, took her time, carefully searching for every document. The line seemed to move slower than the traffic he had left behind. An impulse of irritation surged within him, and he snapped at Mrs. Miller to hurry up. The airport staff and fellow travelers threw him disapproving glances. His agitation was palpable as he boarded his flight, only to discover Mrs. Miller, the lady from the check-in line, seated next to him with her small dog. The universe, it seemed, was playing a cruel joke on him. The day's events spiraled in his mind, a reminder that sometimes, despite our best efforts, things can go awry. But, as he reclined in his seat, he reflected on his behavior towards Mrs. Miller. Maybe, amidst the chaos and pressure, he had lost sight of compassion, patience, and understanding. Daniel knew that, as crucial as the business meeting was, it was equally essential to remember our shared humanity. This tumultuous day had not only tested his patience, but also underscored the importance of grace under pressure. As the plane soared above the clouds, Daniel hoped for a fresh start in Miami, not just for his business, but for his personal growth as well. Daniel Thompson's day was going from bad to worse, and the airport seemed to be the epicenter of his misery. As he stood in the line to check in the counter, anxiety clawed at his every nerve, emphasizing the importance of reaching Miami. Each passing second made his heart race faster. But ahead of him stood Mrs. Miller, an elderly lady whose pace was more suited to leisurely afternoon strolls than the hustle and bustle of JFK Airport. With each minute she took searching her bag for a passport or inquiring about the check-in process, Daniel's impatience grew. When she fumbled and dropped some documents, causing further delay, Daniel lost it. "'Can you move any slower?' "'Some of us have places to be,' he snapped, his voice louder than he intended. The room went silent. All eyes turned to him, a mixture of shock and disapproval in their glances. The staff shot him a stern look, and murmurs arose among the bystanders. But who could blame him? From the outside, it seemed like he had it all. A wealthy entrepreneur with a booming luxury business in New York City— the dazzling lights, the high-rise penthouses, the glitz and glamour, this was Daniel's world, but this wasn't always his life. Born into a working-class family in a small Midwestern town, Daniel was the embodiment of the American dream, 
A humble man, he knew the value of a hard day's work. He remembered evenings helping his father at their small family store, laughing at his mother's humorous tales over dinner, and the lessons they instilled in him about kindness and humility. However, as he moved to New York and witnessed the explosive growth of his luxury business, his roots began to fade in the rearview mirror. The humble man from the Midwest was now a mogul in the Big Apple. The modesty that once adorned him was replaced with a veneer of arrogance. His business became not just a source of income, but his very identity. New York's lavish lifestyle became second nature to him, and with it came a sense of entitlement. But the business landscape is never static. The winds of change blew, and his once thriving empire started to crumble. Expenses soared, sales dwindled, and competitors rose. Panic gripped Daniel as he saw his world threatening to fall apart. The Miami meeting wasn't just another business trip. It was a beacon of hope, a lifeline. As he boarded the plane, his encounter with Mrs. Miller played on his mind. Here he was, so consumed with his own problems that he had forgotten the basic lessons of compassion and patience his parents had taught him. He realized that while money could buy comfort, it could also cloud one's vision, blinding them to the real treasures of life, empathy, kindness, and humility. Settling into his seat, he made a promise to himself. Regardless of how the Miami meeting turned out, he would rebuild, not just his business, but his character as well. It was time for the boy from the Midwest to make a comeback, to return to his roots, and to remember the man he used to be. Daniel adjusted his tie and scanned his boarding pass as he stepped into the first-class cabin of the plane. The day had been draining enough, and he was looking forward to a couple of quiet hours in the luxury and exclusivity of first class. He paused momentarily to soak in the plush leather seats, the abundant legroom, and the personal entertainment system before him. To him, this space was reserved for the elite, those like him who were the movers and shakers of the world. However, a familiar face greeted him as he reached his seat. It was Mrs. Miller, comfortably nestled next to the window with a small dog and a carrier by her feet. Daniel's eyes widened in disbelief. How was she here, in first class? His bruised ego combined with the fatigue and stress of the day fueling his frustration. This is unbelievable, he muttered, glaring at her. This section's not a place for pets, and, and he struggled to find words, his voice dripping with disdain. Mrs. Miller looked taken aback, her wrinkled face showing a mix of confusion and hurt. Before she could reply, a flight attendant approached, sensing the rising tension. Is everything all right here, sir? she inquired, glancing between Daniel and Mrs. Miller. This is first class, Daniel snapped, his voice louder than he intended. It's meant for those who value and understand luxury. It's not a playground for pets. Several passengers turned their heads, whispering among themselves. The flight attendant, trying to keep the peace, said, Sir, Mrs. Miller has every right to be here with her service dog. We prioritize the comfort of all our passengers. Mrs. Miller, her voice shaking, chimed in. Charlie is my emotional support animal. I need him with me, she held the dog's carrier protectively, her eyes moist. But Daniel was unyielding. Either she moves or I do, he declared. Sensing the escalating situation, the flight attendant hesitated for a moment before gently saying, Mrs. Miller, would you mind shifting to another seat? We want to ensure everyone has a pleasant flight. Mrs. Miller, not wanting further confrontation, agreed, her dignity intact. But as she gathered her belongings, a murmur of discontent spread through the cabin. That was uncalled for, whispered one passenger to another. Another one, a middle-aged man, addressed Daniel directly. Young man, having money doesn't give you the right to belittle others. Chastised, Daniel sank into his seat, the weight of his actions pressing down on him. The luxurious surroundings that he had been so eagerly anticipating now felt stifling. As the flight took off, Daniel's thoughts swirled. Was this who he had become, a man who demanded respect but offered none in return? Throughout the flight, he couldn't shake off the guilt and the glaring eyes of the fellow passengers. By the time the plane touched down in Miami, Daniel had done a lot of introspection. The events of the day had shown him a mirror, revealing a reflection he hardly recognized. 
He resolved then and there to make amends, not just to Mrs. Miller, but to himself. Because success, he realized, was not just about thriving in business, but about growing as a human being. And on this flight, his journey of redemption had just begun. The Miami sun cast its warm golden rays upon the tall, modern buildings, bathing them in almost an ethereal glow. With renewed vigor and a suitcase full of sample designs, Daniel alighted from his cab in front of the majestic glass facade of Miller Porcelain Company. He had rehearsed his pitch multiple times and felt prepared for the significant meeting that awaited him. The gleaming lobby of the company was adorned with porcelain art pieces, each telling its own story, a testament to the company's legacy. As he waited to be ushered into the main conference room, Daniel allowed himself a moment to feel the pride of possibly aligning his luxury business with such an esteemed firm. The door opened, revealing an elegant room with a long mahogany table. At the head of the table sat a distinguished-looking gentleman, presumably in his early fifties, with sharp, assessing eyes. This was Nicholas Miller, the man Daniel had heard so much about, the heir to the porcelain empire. "'Mr. Daniel Foster, welcome to Miller Porcelain Company,' Nicholas greeted, extending his hand. Daniel shook it, trying to exude confidence. However, as they settled into their seats, Daniel noticed a familiar face standing next to Nicholas, one that sent a cold shiver down his spine. Mrs. Miller. A heavy silence filled the room, punctuated only by the soft hum of the air conditioner. Nicholas broke the quiet, his voice dripping with disappointment. Mr. Foster, I understand you had an encounter with my mother during your flight here. Swallowing hard, Daniel nodded, bracing himself. My mother is a woman of grace, patience, and understanding, Nicholas continued, his voice laced with emotion. She shared your behavior during the flight, and it's disheartening to think that someone interested in a partnership with us could act so reprehensibly. Daniel looked down, shame evident in his downcast eyes. I deeply regret my actions, Mr. Miller. It was unwarranted and unprofessional. Nicholas studied Daniel for a moment, taking a deep breath. What you did on that flight is a reflection of your character, Mr. Foster. A character, to me, is as crucial as business acumen. Our company has built its reputation not just on the quality of our products, but on the values we uphold. Daniel, grappling with his emotions, whispered, I understand if you no longer wish to proceed with the negotiations. Mrs. Miller, her voice gentle yet firm, spoke up. What you did was wrong, Daniel, but everyone makes mistakes. The crucial part is learning from them. For Daniel, this meeting was not just about losing a significant business opportunity, but a profound confrontation with himself. The man who had once prided himself on being on top of his game had met his match in the form of an elderly woman and her successful son, both of whom valued humanity over sheer profit. As he left the Miller Porcelain Company, the balmy breeze of Miami was a stark contrast to the cold reality he faced. The reflection he saw in the mirror was not one of a successful entrepreneur, but of a man who needed to rebuild himself, not in terms of wealth, but in terms of character, and the journey of rediscovery had only just begun. The bright sunlight gleamed off the skyscrapers, but for Daniel, the world seemed tinted in shades of gray. Exiting the Miller Porcelain Company building, each step he took felt heavy, not just with the weight of the failed business deal, but the pressing burden of a lifetime of misjudgments and misplaced values. Walking through the streets of Miami, Daniel was lost in a whirlwind of memories. The radiant smile of his once close sister faded when he snubbed her boyfriend for coming from a modest background. The distant look in his father's eyes when he scorned their small town ways after making it big in New York. The pain in the voice of a loyal assistant whom he dismissed over a trivial error. All these memories rushed back, painting a picture of a man who'd let his pride dictate his actions, isolating himself from the very people who mattered most. He remembered being a child, idolizing his grandfather, who'd often say, treat every person as you would like to be treated, not for their station in life, but for their humanity. How had he strayed so far from that guiding principle? Somewhere along the way, the lights of New York, the allure of luxury, 
and the siren song of wealth had blinded him to the essence of what it meant to be truly rich. Now the weight of his arrogance felt like chains around his heart. He stopped by a park bench and took a moment to breathe, watching as children played without care, without prejudice. Their innocence, their ability to see everyone as an equal playmate, struck a chord within him. As a gentle breeze ruffled his hair, Daniel made a silent pledge. Starting that day, he would make an effort to relearn the forgotten lessons of humility and compassion. The road to rediscovery would be tough, lined with temptations of reverting to old habits. Still, he vowed to remind himself every day of Mrs. Miller's grace, Nicholas's disappointment, and the countless others he'd wronged along the way. It would be his compass leading him back to the path of humanity. And now the story brings us to a junction where we must ponder our actions. Put yourself in Mrs. Miller's shoes. Faced with disdain and impatience, how would you have reacted? Would anger take the lead or would grace and understanding be your response? Every day, life presents us with opportunities to showcase our humanity, to prove that beneath our titles, our riches, or our perceived importance, we are all bound by the same emotions, vulnerabilities, and needs. Interact with this tale, share your thoughts, and let us create a dialogue about the values we wish to uphold in this ever-evolving world. For in our collective reflections, we might find the guideposts to becoming better versions of ourselves. Remember, it's never too late to chart a course towards redemption and to rekindle the spirit of humanity that binds us all.